Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 139. Day, day 3139. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 139. We are working on the practice exam that you see, practice test that you'll find at the end of the book on page number 360. And we are about to solve problem number 23. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says, the length of AB is 10 times root 3. I will put the picture in a second here. The question simply is, which of the following statements individually, which of the following statements individually provide or provides, if it's just one, sufficient additional information to determine the area of the triangle ABC. What we're interested in is the area of the triangle ABC. Let's see what the, what the picture looks like, the picture that they give us. It looks something like this. They tell us that this is A, this is B, this is C, and then they give you additional, this is D, and finally, they tell us that this angle here is a right angle triangle, which is very important. In other words, ABD is a right triangle, because angle B, we are told, is right triangle. And they're telling us that A to B is 10 root 3. So let's put it here, 10 root 3. So far, so good. Let's look at the first statement. The first, now remember, we have to... We have to be able to tell which statement individually provides enough information for, in addition to this information, which, which statement individually provides sufficient additional information to determine the area. Do you understand? They have to be individually. We cannot combine information from two or three statements together. Statement A. Statement A says, D, B, C is an... equilateral triangle. Let's take a look at it, shall we? D, B, C. Where is D, B, C? I see D, B, C right here. This, this triangle that we see here, we are told that it's equilateral. In other words, these three sides are equal. Now, what will help us a great deal, and this is something you should also do in the exam, what will help us a great deal is if you were to put this triangle in a way that we are used to seeing in a normal situation. In a normal situation, we have a right angle, when we have a right angle triangle, typically we see the right angle triangle like this. The right angle typically sits here. Doesn't it? Makes it easier to analyze things. So let's do that. What I want you to do is, what I want you to do is pick it up, pick it up, and rotate it, rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, watch here. We're going to pick it up and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise so this A will end up on the top right here. This B will end up here. And when we rotate it, point C will end up here. That makes it much easier. We know that A to B is 10 root 3. 10 root 3. And then they give you point D here. At a 90 right here, let's, let's draw a line. It really doesn't matter where point D is because there is no information about it. Now let's analyze it, shall we? Very quickly. Now remember, we want to find, we are interested in the area of a triangle, area of the triangle ABC. A, B, and C, this triangle right here. And how does one find the area of a triangle? How does one find the area of the triangle? Let's do it in the top here. We don't need any of this anymore. area of the triangle, of course we know, is simply one half base times height. Base times height. Area of any triangle. So we are, here we are looking for the area of triangle, area of triangle ABC. 
area of triangle BBC. Well, one half base, base is B to C, which we do not know. This is the part we need to find out. Height is given to us. A to B is the height. Height is given to us. We know that's 10 root 3. That is 10 root 3. Somehow, if we can figure out, if we can figure out the base, we are home free. It is the base that we have to figure out. It is the base that's the unknown part. This guy is what we are interested in. Let's see what we can do here, given the fact that, given the fact that B, D, B, C is equilateral. D, D, B, C is equilateral, which is right here. D, B, C. If D, B, C is equilateral, what we are just told is, this angle right here has to be 60 degrees. Why 60 degrees? Because if, if, if D, B, C, if D, B, C is equilateral, these three sides are equal, which means angle C has to be 60, angle D has to be 60, and part of this angle B, part of it, right here, right, the bottom part here, has to be 60. But we are not interested in the bottom, bottom half of the angle B, we are not interested in angle D. What interests us is the fact that angle C, we just determined, has to be 60, because of the fact that D, D, C is equilateral. If that angle C is 60, what do we do with that information? Well, if that angle C is 60, and A, B, C, is the right angle triangle because it's 90 degrees. If this is 90 degrees and we just determined that this is 60, then this angle A must be 30. In other words, we just found out that triangle ABC is an equilateral, uh, is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Triangle ABC is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And how does 30, 60, 90 triangle look like? In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if this, is, if this is 60 degrees and if this is 30 degrees, even though it doesn't look like it, but don't worry about it because pictures are not drawn to scale in the, in the, in the GRE. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the sides are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to root 3. 1 to 2 to root 3. Even though technically we should say, technically we should put them in the ascending order. 1, root 3 and 2. But I'm just too lazy, I just say 1 to 2 to root 3. As long as you understand that 1 will face the smallest side. The smallest side, the smallest side would face the smallest angle. So this 30 degrees is the smallest angle. This side that faces the 30 degrees has to be 1. The next one is root 3. The biggest one is 2. The biggest value among the 3 here is 2. 2 will face the longest side, which is the side facing the hypotenuse, which is right here, which is 2 and root 3 will face 60 degrees. We know that. We know, already know that that's what that was 30, 60, 90 triangle looks like. And that's what, just, that's what we just found. That's what we just found here. Uh, and I'll tell you what, just to make it easier for us to see, I wasn't paying attention, I should have, I should have paid attention, just to make it pay easier for us to, pay, uh, to analyze this thing, I'm going to redraw this thing so that 30 degree appears in the top and 60 appears in the bottom. Do you understand? Let's redraw it so it makes it easier for us to it will have a nice juxtaposition. Do you understand? So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, let's make this side this time shorter so we can actually see it. That is 30. There we go. This is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. In the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the smallest side will face the smallest angle, which is 1. The largest, largest side will face the largest angle, which is 2 and then root 3 goes here. Well, what do we notice? In a 30-60-90 triangle, in a 30-60-90 triangle, the sides are always in the ratio of 1 to 2 to root 3. They're always in this ratio. And here, in this triangle, the corresponding side is this one. Root 3 right here, you see? Except it is not root 3, it is 10 times root 3. In other words, this triangle that we see here is the exact same triangle as this one, it just has been enlarged 10 times. So if that is 10 root, if that's 10 times root 3, if, if it's this side is 10 times root 3, if that side is 10 times root 3, then this side must be 10 times 1, and this side must be 10 times 2. Again, we are not interested in the hypotenuse. What we are interested in is knowing this side. This is what we are interested in knowing, and we just found out 
But if that one is 10 times root 3, then this has to be 1 10, root 3 times 10, and this one has to be 1 times 10. There we go. We wanted to find the base, we found the base. The base is 10. In other words, in other words, knowing the fact that this bottom triangle DBC is an equilateral triangle provides us sufficient additional information for us to be able to figure out the area of the triangle ABC. Why? Because if DBC is an equilateral, then this angle must be 60. If this angle is 60, this angle must be 30. If this angle is 30, this angle is 60 and this is 90, they are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to root 3. So if this is 10 times root 3, this has to be 1 times 10. If this is if it is if it is root 3 times 10, if this is root 3 times 10, this has to be 1 times 10. The base is 10. We just found out that the base is 10. If the base is 10, of course we can figure out the area. We don't have to do it out. They're not asking us what the area of the triangle is. We simply have we simply have to be able to tell is it possible to figure it out? And the answer is yes, because we just found the base. But since we started this, let's finish it up, it will only take a second. Or we can even do it here. We just found out that the base is 10. Divide by uh, five top and bottom, and it's just five times ten, which is fifty times root three. But that part wasn't necessary. So what we establish here is that statement one, the statement one, works just fine. Statement work works just fine. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that uh, A B D is an isosceles triangle. Let's take a look at ABD. And this time, before we do start any work and before we completely forget it, we must remember, we must remember, we cannot use information from one statement and combine with the other. They have to be individually analy analyzed individually. So we have to erase what we learned before. It did not exist. We never learned it. We, nobody told us this thing. This is, doesn't exist. We were not told any of this. Do you understand? It's gone. We still want to find out this base, and we're going to find out if it is possible or not to figure out the value of this base by knowing this. Let's begin. So ABD, we are told, is isosceles triangle. Where is ABD? Right here. ABD. This triangle that we see here, ABD, is an isosceles triangle. ABD. Let's call this three sides A, 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 B, D. Let's call this three sides, even though we know the value of this thing, let's just call it L1. L2 and L3. So what this tells us is that two sides in this triangle ABD are equal to each other. Let's just assume for the time being, let's just for the sake of argument, let's just assume that knowing one particular pair of two sides being equal to each other does help us in finding the base here. Let's just assume, for the, purely for the sake of argument, purely for the sake of uh, uh, analysis, let's just assume that knowing that two of these three sides, when they are equal to each other, it helps us find the base, then the question still remains, which two sides are equal? A, B, D, we are told, is isosceles, L1, L2, L3. Does it mean that L1 is equal to L2? Does it mean that L1 is equal to L3? Does it mean that L2 is equal to L3? We do not know which two sides are equal. Assuming, of course, that if we had known that these two sides are equal, we can figure out the base, which is not true at all. But even if we were to assume that, even if we were to assume that, we still do not know which two sides are equal. Simply knowing that this is an isosceles triangle, top angle that is ABD, simply knowing that ABD is an isosceles triangle, helps us in absolutely no way to find the length of BC. It is an utterly useless information. It is not going to, help, it is not going to enable us to find the base of the triangle ABC, the base being B to C. Let's look at the third statement. Third statement tells us that the length of BC, the length of BC is equal to the length of AD. Length of BC is equal to length of AD. So let's do it one more time. We can erase all of this thing. We're no longer working the second statement. BC, where is BC? Right here. The length of BC, oh, the, what, the part that we want to find, this side that we have, want to find, that we are actually interested in finding, which is the base of the triangle, which is the base, that's, which is what we're trying to find. So now we are told that is equal to AD, right here, is equal to AD. This side is equal to that side. Well, that's just fine and dandy. So now we know that this base that we are interested in is equal to this length AD, but the question still, still remains, how much is AD? 
Do you understand? If I want to find out uh, what, what's, the, what's the cost of uh, this particular uh, pen and you tell me this particular pen costs the same as that particular uh, uh, eraser, it's not going to help us. What's the cost of the eraser then? I don't know. This is useless. Simply knowing that BC, the base is equal to this side, doesn't help us. Let's look at D. What does D tell us? Oh, D is just too silly. In statement D, statement D is just too silly. In statement D, tell, they tell us that the base is 10, which is what we want to find out. If we know the base, which, which, which in statement 10, they clearly tell us that it is equal to 10. But then we are home free. We know the base, we know the height, we can figure out the area. Oh, that was too childish. Statement D works. The statement D works. What about statement E? It says the length of AD is equal to 10. Length of AD is equal to 10. Let's erase all of this thing. Length of AD is equal to 10. So now we know that A to D is 10. So what they are hoping, what they are hoping, the people who make the exam, what they are happy, hoping that despite the fact that we are told, despite the fact that we are told that we are to analyze this statement individually, sometimes people don't pay attention. They pay no attention to the instructions and they say to themselves, Ah, oh, well, listen, I want to find the base. Where is the cap for the, cap for the black one? Oh, blast it. They say to themselves, I want to find, I want to find the base. I want to find the base. In statement C, they tell us that BC equals AD, B to C equals AD. And in this statement, they tell us that, uh, that uh, AD equals 10. Then if AD, if AD is equal to 10 and AD is equal to BC, then BC must be 10. What they're doing here is they're combining C and E. They're combining the two together and they're saying, ah, if I know, if I know AD is 10 and AD is equal to BC, then I know BC. That is true. If you know that AD is 10, and then if you if you are told in addition to that that AD equals BC, then BC must be 10. But that's just the point. We cannot combine the two information together. They have to be analyzed individually. Again, simply knowing that AD is equal to 10 is not going to enable us to find BC. It doesn't work by itself. It does not work by itself. C does not work by itself. B did not do anything by itself. D works by itself because it's a clear cut direct information and A work because with A we can we could indirectly figure out the value of BC because A told us A told us that this this triangle is isosceles triangle one more time if this triangle is isosceles this must be 60 if this is 60 this must be 30 if this is 30 this is 60 this is 90 they are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to root 3 and if, since this is 10 times root 3 this must be 10 times 1 so A work and D work. The answer is A and D. A and D. A and D. That's the correct answer. And if you are interested in knowing, in the event that you are interested in knowing, about 17% of people got this question right. In other words, more than four-fifths of the people, when they got this question in the real exam, they bombed it. They couldn't answer it. And a lot of the people got it wrong because they're not paying attention and they're combining information. It doesn't work that way. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we'll do the last two problems in this section. Problem number 24 and 25. And that will be the 10th video. So we started test one, the first section of the, of the test one on 3131. And in 10 videos, we finish the section. Tomorrow is the last 10th day, and we'll do the last two questions. Okay? Bye now.